Hi, my name is Jay Prashant Mohan Ram and you are watching Car Talk. Today I'm at Udaipur driving the Tata Curve.EV. This is the first affordable electric coupe that India has seen and this is brought to you by Tata Motors. Right here, this is the Curve.EV. There in the background, you can see the Aravali Hills. The Aravali mountain range is the oldest range, mountain range in India and this is the newest car. This is Tata's probably the most stylish car that Tata has ever produced. It's a SUV coupe, it's an electric SUV coupe. And now, since we're talking styling, let's jump right into the design of the Tata Curve.EV. Let's jump straight into the design of the Tata Curve. Up front, you know that it's a typical Tata. There's a big Tata grill underneath. This is the charging port. And another key design detail here are the connected DRLs. It's white now and you have the turn indicators on so you can see yeah, orange amber there. But once, you know, you, when you're driving, you have this entire part in white. So that is a typical design touch now what you have in the Nexon, in the uh, Nexon.EV as well as the uh, Tata Punch. So this is a, becoming a characteristic of Tata's EVs. And that is basically the smiley grill and that basically makes the car look friendly. But apart from that, there is a lot of aggression. This is a high set bonnet. This is probably the highest part of the bonnet and this is where you actually uh, get the typical SUV look of the uh, Tata Curve. And again, there is a lot of aggression in the bumpers. There's a lot of sculpting in the bumpers and you can see this, there's, there's sculpting here. Everything looks sharp up front and this is what actually makes the Tata Curve look aggressive. There's, there's a blend of friendliness and aggressive in the Tata Curve's front end. The bumper, as you can see, the air dam is limited to this spot. The reason the air dam is so small is because there is a motor here and only the motor needs to be cooled. You don't have to cool everything. This is an electric car, as you know. So that's basically the front end of the Tata Curve. Now, let's move on to the side and show you some more stuff. Oh, before I forget, even up front, uh, you also have the uh, projector LED headlamps and these are cornering lamps up front. Uh, before I forget, I just wanted to tell you this. And now let's move to the side of the car and let's show you the profile of the car. Moving on to the profile of the Tata Curve. This is probably the most, my, you know, my most favorite part of the Tata Curve's design book because this is where the SUV Coupe stance really comes through. Just, just look at that. Just look at the curve here. This curve here is probably what gives you the Coupe uh, SUV stance. And this is probably why Tata Motors calls it the Tata Curve because this is one prominent curve. In the Nexon EV, of course, you, you have a, you know, it falls directly. The roof line just falls directly abruptly. But here, there's a nice little curve and this one, this is what gives the uh, Tata Curve the coup, Coupe SUV stunts and there is there is plenty of ground clearance 190 mm of it and you can see it's a high riding car I mean this is a very polarizing design some people are going to absolutely love this because it looks like a Coupe SUV some people just won't like it they'll, they'll say that it's a very high set sedan for me of course it works for me it looks like a Porsche Safari and uh, you know in my mind it's almost like you know I'm driving on a dirt uh, road driving sideways and you know, I'm almost in a Porsche. So that is the kind of feel I get in the Tata Curve. So I'm very impressed with the design. This is one of the most beautiful parts of the car. And uh, you also have flush type uh, door handles. This may not be the most ergonomic to use, but then I think you'll get used to it in the next five years. Probably every car will be offering this. And there is illumination here. This is a first of kind feature. And I wanted to highlight one more thing. See, you've got the cladding here. The cladding here is piano black finish. Okay, this could be a scratch magnet. So far, it's it's been good because this car has almost uh, been driven almost 2,000 kilometers, and we don't I can't see scratches here because the media car it should have you know gone for shoots etc. But so far it's good. But I always have that in back of the mind. But this is uh, the color. You know this is a pure gray color. This is uh, Tata's uh, name for Nardo gray, and this color along with the piano black. Uh, cladding really goes well and you have a sense of premiumness because otherwise I would have originally expected matte but even without matte it actually goes well so this is the profile of the Tata Curve the Tata Curve rides on massive 18 inch wheels and guess what despite it running on 18 inch wheels the suspension is extremely compliant I'll come to that in the drive but drive section but so far uh, I've not really had an issue with the alloy wheels you know being so large I think you know Tata pulled off a fantastic job in terms of suspension uh, despite having 18 inch wheels now let's look at the rear the rear is where uh, the Tata Curve almost feels like a Lamborghini Urus. Uh, some trivia again for you. Uh, in the run-up to launch, somebody had sent us a video. They, sh they were showing me a, a red color Lamborghini Urus from the rear and they called it the Tata Curve. We almost believed it. So this is how close this thing looks to a Lamborghini Urus, especially from the rear. And you've got this nice, you know, bumper insert here. This almost, I mean, I'm sorry, it's not a bumper insert. It's basically on the tailgate. So this basically gives you, uh, there is a... Uh, 
again a connected rear uh, tail lamp that uh, runs across from left to right you can see the turn indicators here so this is something that really gives you that uh, beautiful look from the rear and at night it look absolutely smashing and there's a lot of sculpting again a lot of sharp edges a lot of wedges here again uh, the bumper again the rear bumper just like the front bumper is looks very aggressive it's got a lot of sculpting overall this is uh, the rear three quarters is probably uh, where the tata curve actually comes across like a lamborghini urus and this is again uh, another part of the uh, curve that i really like about the overall design of the curve and then the other things, of course, uh, you can see blisters here. These blisters are because uh, the Tata curve has these the hinges. It's a coupe SUV that are hinges there, and Tata Motors has managed to cover it up very beautifully with these blisters. It's almost seamless. You can't even know. Most people are not even going to ask what that is. So that's a good thing. There's a shark fin antenna there, and up beyond that, you have the big, massive panoramic sunroof. Yes, the Tata curve comes with a panoramic sunroof. Okay, and uh, there's one more design highlight of there profile that I forgot to tell you before so look at this a rising waistline you know it rises from here it keeps on rising it keeps on going there is there is this rising waistline this is basically typical of coupe SUV some people don't like this rising waistline they'd rather prefer it to be flat but I like the rising uh, waistline because it gives the design some kind of energy it makes the Tata curve it, it's almost like uh, you know it's it's you know the, the uh, curve looks like a spring that's waiting to be released that kind of momentum is there in the design because of that rising waistline and I particularly like that. So I am sitting in the very luxurious cabin of the Tata Curve. You have leather seats, you have a grey and white overall theme across the cabin. There is beige on top. So overall this almost feels like a luxury car and uh, uh, the coolest part I'll show you is this metal insert. It's almost a brushed aluminum insert that runs from you know from the left of the uh, to the right of the dashboard across the dashboard and this probably uh, wouldn't be out of place even in a BMW and that elevates the Tata Curve's uh, uh, cabin to the next level. It feels very luxurious. You have a, have a big infotainment unit, a floating infotainment unit. You have a plenty of information right now. It's showing you the front camera. You have a 360 degree camera and you have literally everything, what, whatever you need. You have a bunch of apps, Spotify, etc, etc on this particular console and uh, out here you have the TFT display which again gives you there's a lot of inf information it almost feels that you're like you know you're sitting in an air aircraft cockpit and these paddle shifters they are basically uh, i mean you can't change gears in this but you can adjust the region modes and here we are let's move on to the center console you have a piano black finish here and you also have these uh, okay this is the gear shifter island type gear shifter and this basically lets you select the drive mode since it's an electric car and these are the multiple modes you have city mode eco mode and sport mode there's an electric parking brake here, there is auto hill hold and this is basically the digital part of the uh, center console. The only phys uh, physical buttons are for say the blower speed and for the temperature. The seats uh, have a six way uh, electric adjust, you can see this. Okay, so I'm adjusting my seats. Alright, there's, there's a six way adjust in the seats and this is only the uh, driver's seat has that, the passenger seat doesn't have that, the passenger seat but both of the, both the seats are ventilated. Only the driver's seat offers, uh, you know, electric adjustment. Overall, it's a very, very luxurious cabin. Uh, for the price at which the Tata Curve has been launched, this almost feels like a luxury car. And yes, now let me show you the panoramic sunroof of the Tata Curve. This is another element that a lot of people are going to like. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is a panoramic sunroof. Half of it opens, half of it remains closed. I mean, it's fixed in place. These are the, this is basically the interior, the front seats of the Tata Curve. Now, let's go uh, to the rear and show you the amount of space on offer. So I am at the rear seat of the Tata Curve. So the seats have uh, two levels of uh, recline. So that is a nice touch. Apart from that, uh, for me, the headroom is more than sufficient. I am five foot seven inches. But for somebody who's six foot tall, the headroom could be a challenge. But that is something you can't really help because this is a coupe SUV and this is how it's going to be. Because the coupe roof line is, just, it is a plunging roof line. And because it's plunging, you get such beautiful looks on the outside. On the inside, there is this bit of compromise. But Tata Motors has scooped this, you know, section and has made, uh, done their best to really give you a lot of headroom. But overall, it's a comfortable place to be in. Uh, I would have liked a little bit of more under thigh support. But yeah, see, as you can see, there is no, there's so much space between my thigh and the uh, seat. But if I do this, I'm more or less comfortable. There's a lot of leg room here. So overall, you know, knee room. 
so overall it's actually a very comfortable place to be in this is actually a uh, three people can sit here it can be a little bit of a squeeze once i pull the armrest it becomes a two seater as well and i think this is most uh, i mean this is best enjoyed as a two seater but three people uh, will be sque uh, squeezed and but they can still you know uh, use the i mean it's more or less usable okay now i'll show you the boot of the tata curve it's got gesture control so you do this and the boot opens okay so this is how it opens gesture control i think this is the first on a mass market car like the tata curve and it makes life very easy so there this is a cavernous boot you've got 500 liters of storage it's about 100 liters more than what you have in the next one it's pretty big you can see you know we have our bags that are lying uh, and there's plenty of space there and you can actually load a qu quite a lot of stuff and this is a parcel tray the parcel tray is not very large it's small because you already have the coupe uh, plunging roof so the parcel tray is not large but overall the boot is pretty large and there are a lot of storage compartments see there is some storage here and you can actually open this and put something there as well and uh, i also would like to show you this part this part is basically again an electronic close for the boot very seamless works beautifully so i am on a highway of udaipur i am driving the tata curve dot ev india's most affordable electric suv coupe I've already covered the exterior, the interiors, and now we are at the driving section of the review. And as you can see, it's it's very quiet inside because this is an electric car. Apart from the turbine-like smoothness of the electric motor, there's very little sound. You can hear the motor though, I'm flooring it. I'm in sport mode. Yep. So 100 comes up in no time. It's a very powerful car. It's got 167 bs of peak power, which is it's the most powerful uh, electric car that Tata Motors has produced and there is a little bit of talk steer when I actually uh, go pedal to metal on this car. It's got adaptive cruise control, again it's a boon on Indian highways because uh, traffic here tends to slow down, there's you know variety of traffic on the road so adaptive cruise control is something that you uh, really want and the Tata Curve.EV has that and now we have a stretch of broken tarmac. In terms of ride, the ride is very good. It's got the, a little bit of firm edge to it. It's not absolutely uh, uh, the most, you know, compliant suspension, but you have that firm edge. And right now I'm doing some broken roads, okay, and I literally don't feel the road. I'm at about 50 kilometers per hour. So this is something that, you know, it's very good. The ride quality is fantastic. Uh, there is a little bit of crashiness in the suspension, especially if you have a very large pothole. The steering, when I talk about steering, the steering is well weighted. It's not very light, at, even at parking speed, it's not super light. Okay, it's not that one finger kind of steering, you know, the Hyundai steering that, you know, uh, I've driven. But uh, this is a little, you know, it has a little bit of heft to it and I personally like it. Of course, it's not like a hydraulic steering, this is an electric car. So, uh, no electric hydraulics here, it's, it's a pure electric steering, but it weighs, weighs up very nicely when you're driving fast in fact uh, we were uh, doing uh, some twisties there were these i mean the aravali hills where we were shooting the car uh, so we do doing this twisties and the steering really weighs up well uh, so i really like that part of the curve and at lower speeds it's quite light overall it's it's a very nice steering uh, what you get in this car is also when you flow the throttle there's there's a surge of power and uh, roll on acceleration is very very strong that's because you have Talk on demand you've got all 215 newton meters in fact at the shaft this baby produces 2500 newton meters of torque but at the wheel obviously is 215 meter newton meters and uh, that's plenty uh, top speed is limited to 160 kilometers per hour but we couldn't really take it up to that level because we are on public roads we can't really be doing those speeds but yes uh, this car can easily do 160 and within no time so I think uh, Tata claims about 8.6 seconds for their uh, 0 to 100 time and uh, I have no doubt I think we can achieve it. So overall it's a very nice car to drive, it's a very very sporty car, it's a SUV coupe and it's uh, probably the sportiest car that Tata Motors has built and these uh, you know behind the steering wheel you have the paddle controls, I mean the paddle shifters in fact, the paddle shifters basically control the uh, brake energy regeneration so there are three settings and uh, you can vary it now i'm going down the brake energy regeneration whereas there's no braking you'll have to brake 
but if you set break energy regeneration the three uh, different uh, stages the top stage that is the third stage you have uh, basically you can drive the car it's almost a single pedal you see all right so i am on using the adaptive cruise control feature i've set it at 50 km per hour but since there's a lot of traffic the car is automatically uh, keeping me at 45 yep and now there's no traffic i mean there is traffic but there's a swift that's about say uh, 200 meters in front of me so now i'm at 50 km per hour so if the swift pro uh, probably slows down uh, my speed is also going to get cut because the uh, adaptive cruise control is automatically going to break for me i just have to steer in fact if there are lane markings the lane keep assist will also steer for me okay this is level 2 air asset now see i'm at 49 right so since there is a motorcycle in front of me I'm, my speed is reducing i'm at 37 now so it's reducing my speed. This is the beauty of adaptive cruise control. It really works in Indian conditions. Now, it's a very slow moving uh, vehicle there. So let me, let's see what it does when I go closer. See, my speed's getting cut to 27 now. Now I'm gonna steer back behind this truck. Again, I'm not gonna go faster. Okay, now there's enough distance. Now I again accelerate. So this is a very safe feature, but it can actually, uh, you know, piss people off behind me because they may, not have the same kind of patience because when they see a car that actually slows down so much but it's almost like an aircraft so if you're going to be using this you're not going to collide with anything so that's the beauty of adaptive cruise control all right here are my closing comments about the uh Tata Curve.tv. I've driven the car for about 150 kilometers in about six hours. I drove the car on city streets, on some winding roads, hilly terrain. I also drove it on some broken stretches of tarmac and I uh, drove it on the highway as well. Uh, I could take it up to about 140 kilometers. It was very, very quick. So all in all, I think the biggest standout for me about the Tata Curve.ev is its highway capability. This is probably India's most affordable highway ready car and of course also Tata's most affordable highway ready car because it's got a 55 kilowatt hour battery. Overall the car uh, drives well, handles well, it's got a boatload of features. I couldn't explore everything because you know limited time there's a lot, of, lot more to unpack. All in all I think you're gonna be seeing a lot of Tata Curve.evs okay on Indian roads and uh, that is basically it. So do let us know what you think about the Tata Curve.ev. I think it's a fantastic car. Uh, if you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button and you may also want to give us that like. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for watching Car Talk.